so far this season, Spurs and dominating have not exactly been used in the same sentence, at least not much until today, after what they did to Detroit last night. Look at Wimby getting that rebound, and watch this. I wonder if Dak's watching. That's a great pass down there to Jeremy Sohan for the slam dunk. So the Spurs led 31-19 after one, second quarter. My Malachi Branham shoots and misses. There's the tip in from Wimby. He had 12 points at the break. Spurs up 63-51 at half. We go to the third quarter. You know, this is what a 7-5 will do for you. Devin Vassell lobs it up there. Wimby like, eh, but let, me, let, me get, let me just lay that in. Right over the rim. Unbelievable. All right, thought that was good. How about this? Look at that little pass, huh? How you like that? Yeah. Behind his back to Sohan, two more. <coughs> Excuse me. Spurs are up 19, fourth quarter. Spurs are up big. Victor fed right there, Doug McDermott for the three, his 10th assist of the game. That's why this is important because the Spurs win 130 to one away, but that was his first triple double. 16 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists in just 21 minutes. I think it started on the defense end. We were getting stops and we were able to run. And I think our point guards were just doing a great job of getting the paint and finding our shooters. And obviously Vic having a triple-double, um, the game started to really slow down for him. And uh, he did a great job of finding cutters and shooters all night. All right, so the Spurs come back home for a couple. They host Charlotte on Friday nights, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Frost Bank Center. Head football coach Glenn Mangold has a new home right across the street from KSAT 12 at Central Catholic High School. He has 34 years of coaching experience, takes over at Central after spending the past decade with the New Braunfels Unicorns. He's ready to give back to the Catholic community and lead the buttons. My family's excited. They're uh, ready to come to the first game and then just uh, enjoy being part of the Central Catholic family and the brotherhood that we have here. One of the great coaches in our area, and I'm sure Central Catholic is thrilled to have him over there. New neighbor. Mm -hmm. New Today 5. Just what is inside the foods we eat? It doesn't sound very appetizing, but plastic chemicals lurking in a lot of foods we buy, from cereals to meats to milks to even produce. And yes, fast food. There can be health consequences coming up. We're going to show you just how widespread these plastics are which tested foods have the most of them, and why you may not want to put plastic containers in the microwave. I heard that before. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. A teen accused of murder who once taunted sheriff's deputies on social media after cutting off his ankle monitor, getting a plea deal from the DA. Isaac Gonzalez just got picked up last October. He was on the run with his co-defendant last year after being charged for a drive-by that hit the wrong house, killing a woman. Erica Hernandez now joins us live from the Justice Center. So what was the demeanor in that courtroom, Erica? We appear to be having some As audio so, problems um, here. He was actually quiet. Let's go he to her entered now. the courtroom. He entered the courtroom. There's no. We're having some audio problems. He was quiet as he entered the courtroom. And we're going to get back to Erica in just a moment. Meantime, we'll take a look outside with live cam. It looks awfully calm out there right now. It will not stay that way. Uh, you're correct. And you know we had some fog this morning, but that's all cleared out. Blue skies now. Uh, really turning into a nice day. Temperatures actually make their way into the 70s this afternoon. This will be our warmest day over the next week. So if you like warm weather, enjoy today. I want to show you that we showed you earlier the temperatures across the country. Now look at Canada. Look at these numbers. Uh, just cold, bitter cold up there. Uh, negative 45 in Yellowknife. We've got temperatures like negative 36 in Stony Rapids, negative 31 in Edmonton. That is all that cold air that has built up and now it has to go somewhere and it is going to head south right down the plains and it will make its way towards Texas. Already starting to see the leading edge of that uh, make its way into places like Montana, North Dakota, where temperatures are at or below zero here across Texas. One of the warmest spots in the country today down there in Brownsville, 77. We're at 63. As we go outside one more time, here's a look at the weather headlines. That Arctic air arriving ahead of schedule Sunday morning. That's when you can expect that cold air to move in. So Sunday will be a cold day. If you're planning out your weekend, Saturday's going to be the better of the two. Strong winds, very gusty winds expected tomorrow morning. That's another big headline. 
and precipitation. There is a small window for some light freezing rain as we get into Sunday night, Monday morning. I don't expect much in the way of impacts, but we are watching it very closely. So those are the headlines. Forecast for today, 73 at 3 o'clock, 74, 4 p.m. Down into the 60s tonight, that cold front gets here midnight. Expect those winds to really kick up by 3, 4 a.m. And you'll feel it tomorrow morning on that commute, the morning commute, uh, with winds gusting potentially up to 50 miles per hour. Guys. We just did that. Thank you, Justin. Finding focus during the pandemic apparently meant turning to ADHD drugs. A new study showing prescriptions for medications to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder spiked in 2020 and 2021. As well, the number of new prescriptions for stimulants used for ADHD rose 14 percent. That's after refills for those drugs remained steady from 2016 to 2020. Prescriptions for other medications used to treat the disorder rose 32 percent, reaching 1.4 million, the largest increase seen among women in their 20s and 30s. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration temporarily allowing a drug maker from France to send a medication to treat syphilis here to the U.S., even though that medication is not approved in the U.S. The action comes amid an ongoing shortage of an antibiotic. Data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows from 2017 to 2021, reported cases of syphilis in the U.S. jumped about 74 percent. And cases of congenital syphilis, when a mother with syphilis passes that infection onto her baby during pregnancy, that increased more than 200 percent. And for the first time, a study. It shows the results of sugar taxes imposed in U.S. cities. The final verdict? They do work in reducing the number of sugary drink sales. The study in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows that raising the price of sugar-sweetened drinks by an average of 31 percent due to city-imposed taxing reduced purchases of those drinks by the same amount in those cities. The researchers looked at per-ounce tax plans in five U.S. cities, including San Francisco and Philadelphia. The study's author says for every 1 percent increase in the price of a sugar drink, there was a 1 percent drop in purchasing. Sugary drinks were linked to chronic diseases, including heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, and stroke. The American Cancer Society estimated that roughly 2 million Americans would be diagnosed with cancer last year, and in that time, more than 609,000 people would die of the disease. But early detection can save lives. CNN's Mandy Gaither with the top five cancer screenings you need to set up in 2024. They're powerful weapons against a potentially life-threatening disease. Screenings can detect cancer early. Many cancers found under with screening techniques are actually quite curable. The American Cancer Society says the top five cancer screenings to set up in 2024 start with a mammogram. The organization recommends women at age 40 start talking to their doctor about scheduling one. By age 45, every woman should have an annual mammogram. Women with a higher risk of breast cancer may need screening earlier. And women that are younger, often with dense breast, may need additional testing even beyond a mammogram. Next, set up a colorectal cancer screening for people who aren't at high risk based on factors like family history or a previous polyp. There's a home test. Those at average risk or higher should get a colonoscopy starting at age 45. Your results will dictate how often this screening is needed. Third, prostate cancer screening. That's recommended for men starting between the ages of 45 and 50. And by age 50, it should be an annual discussion with their doctor. African Americans and others at higher risk for this disease may need screening as early as age 40. Fourth, screening for cervical cancer, which is most often caused by the human papillomavirus or HPV. Women should start by age 25, have an HPV test. That test can be done at the same time as a patient's pap smear. And finally, set up a lung cancer screening starting at age 50 for smokers or former smokers with a 20-pack year history. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Suspected Chinese hackers targeted a U.S.-based research organization last month. That is according to a cybersecurity firm which wrote about the hacking in a blog post. It says the hackers exploited two flaws on popular virtual private networking software in order to gain unfettered access to the victim organization. 
The firm did not name the affected organization, but says it does research on geopolitics and often draws attention from state-backed hackers. Software was made by Avanti, which says it was developing an update to fix the flaws. Avanti is also urging its customers to take additional steps to protect themselves. The federal government is announcing that it will fund more than $620 million worth of new electric car charging stations across the country. That will more than quadruple the number of ports in our country. The Secretary of Transportation saying there are 47 projects in 22 states and Puerto Rico that will result in 7,500 new charging ports. It also includes, includes rather hydrogen fueling facilities for freight trucks in busy corridors. The funding part of a bipartisan infrastructure <coughs> law last year. Right now, there's about 170,000 EV chargers on American roads. The goal is to have 500,000 by the end of the decade. Former President Donald Trump's business empire in New York is at stake. The former president attended closing arguments for his civil fraud trial. New York Attorney General Letitia James alleges Trump, his adult sons, his company, defrauded banks and insurance companies by inflating their value of the assets. James is seeking $370 million in damages and to bar Trump from doing business in the state. Ingeron already ruled Trump has and his co-defendants were liable for fraud. He is the judge overseeing that case. That all happened before the trial. This is only to determine the scope of the damages as well as six additional claims including conspiracy, issuing false financial statements, falsifying records and insurance fraud. A warning for people in the San Antonio area how scammers are targeting CPS Energy customers. Coming up. We want to take you back to the Bear County Courthouse. We lost our audio with Erica Hernandez. She is on the plea deal uh, getting cut this morning for Isaac Gonzalez. Yeah, she was talking about the mood in that courtroom when that uh, deal was announced. So let's go back down to Erica. Hey, David and Ursula. Yeah, we saw him come in. It was a different reaction than what we saw the last time when he was arrested. He was quiet. He just smiled and nodded to his family. Now, was arrested for the murder of 25-year-old Novita Brazil in the 11,400 block of Bald Mountain Drive. Gonzalez, along with another teen, targeted the wrong house, and Brazil was shot in the face as she was working on her computer in her bedroom. Another woman, an Airbnb tenant, was had just arrived to the home, and she suffered a gunshot wound to the leg. Gonzalez and 15-year-old Renee Gonzalez were arrested and charged with murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. They were all they were released on bond and put on GPS monitor, monitoring. In in October, both Isaac and Renee cut off their GPS monitors and BCSO issued warrants for them. They were seen on social media taunting BCSO, but they were eventually recaptured and had been in jail since. Now, this plea deal, again, it was 40 years for murder and 20 years for the aggravated assault charge. Those will run concurrently. But this was not the official sentencing. That will take place on Tuesday because there will more likely be some victim impact statements to go along with that sentencing after it takes place. As for the co-defendant, Rene Gonzalez, he is on the docket for tomorrow. There is no word yet if he will as well be getting a plea deal or moving forward with trial. Live at the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Erica. Glad we finally got that information. We have other breaking news. What you're looking at is body cam footage within the last half hour, San Antonio police releasing the police report, the dash cam, the body cam footage, all of it from the night that officers arrested District 10 City Councilman Mark White for DWI. Yeah, White was arrested on December 29th after being pulled over while driving on Loop 410. The video shows White going through a field sobriety test. He is also heard on the video telling the officer he had flown in from Australia that day, but didn't feel tired. White told officers he had a beer at three different spots that night. Now, after his arrest, he did apologize in a statement to the council and his constituents. This video released just about an hour after the city council announced that it was stripping White of all of his committee assignments for the time being. They have scheduled a special meeting on Sunday in order to vote on a possible censure of White. 
You can see the entire video released by the police department and the report. It's all of it is on our website, ksat.com. CPS Energy warning its customers about a potential scam. Several people have called CPS saying someone is calling them posing as a CPS employee. Utility reminds everyone its employees will rarely ask to go inside your home and will almost never ask to see your energy bill. You can always call CPS directly if you have any questions. Speaking of energy bills. Yeah, get ready. <laughs> uh, you know, turn off your heater right now because you might want to start conserving. Mm, after this summer, too, where we you know, spent so much money on the AC, now we're going the other way. Uh, outside right now, blue skies. Uh, it's nice right now, 63 after a morning low of 38. The averages are 63 and 41. We'll actually be above average today. Uh, the records are 84 and 12. It is about to get very cold, though. That cold front scheduled to be here on Sunday. Another update on that seven-day forecast coming up. We were talking about taking care of your plants and your people and your pipes and all that kind of stuff this weekend. And we mentioned like a lot of these stores are out of those covers for your, your right. bibs outside. Now, I'm no plumber, and I'm not saying this is the way to go, but... I would cover my pipes with like towels and a lot of duct Blankets tape. Blankets and anything. Yeah, anything so you got. They work, but I'm like, you know. But you, if you if do. there's a wind and yeah, it's at a certain it angle, it, yeah. yeah, you know, sometimes you just never know where it's gonna. You're get right. You. you can't do that. And, and Amazon's not bad too. You can order. <laughs> so oh yeah, I forgot about Amazon. Yeah, yeah it's, do it overnight. Uh, it helps. Yeah, it'll be here before the snow. Oh, it, when, when it comes to covering rain, your plants too, that you mentioned the wind, that can make it tough too. Okay, so I want to put some people's mind at ease. Uh, we remember 2021. It's stuck in our head. Uh, ERCOT tweeted out earlier that they continue to closely monitor the winter weather moving in over the weekend and will deploy all available tools to reliably manage the grid. <laughs> They'll post daily updates to their social media. So uh, they're attempting to stay on top of this. And I don't think this is going to be that kind of event. Yes, we're going to be below freezing for a while, but not like we were in 2021. So I want to put some people's mind at ease when it comes to that. But that being said, it is going to be very cold. As we go outside for you right now, blue skies and temperatures sitting at 63. New Braunfels 57, Seguin at 67. And I think we're going to start to see some 70s on the map pretty soon. Not bad. Our forecast today, 70 at 2 o'clock, 73, 3 p.m. We're up around 74 today for a high. And then we slip back down into the 60s tonight. Now, we do get a frontal boundary around midnight. And that will bring in some gusty winds and cool us down for tomorrow. Those winds will be mighty strong. We're talking gusts up to 40, maybe 50 miles per hour, especially between, I'd say, 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's a time frame where it is uh, you're, you're going to hear the wind howling outside your house. Uh, that's how strong these winds will be. And we just did this a few days ago. Very similar event. So we've got to watch some of the trees, some of the power lines, things like that. Any loose stuff you have sitting in your yard, it'll blow away. Uh, so just be aware. Uh, as we look at the high temperatures tomorrow, the front does cool us down. So we go from being in the 70s today to 50s tomorrow. 58 for a high here in San Antonio, mid 50s in Kerrville, maybe some 60s on the map. But with that northwesterly wind, it'll just feel quite a bit chillier. Uh, tomorrow will be a change. Send the kids to school with a jacket and they might as well just keep it with them for a good week because after that it gets even cooler. Yeah, Saturday's not bad, but by Sunday when we expect our front to come through and this, by the way, I think comes through early Sunday morning. So Sunday is a uh, high of only 34. And by the way, if you weren't watching us earlier, this is a change. The front is moved up. We've moved up the schedule. So Sunday is going to be a cold, blustery day. 20% uh, chance of some light ice, uh, maybe light uh, freezing drizzle, maybe light uh, freezing rain, or a little bit of sleet Sunday night into Monday morning. Is this a big deal? I don't think so at this point. I don't think there's going to be major impacts. But these kind of things can change. And if they do, we'll certainly let you know, and we'll be on top of it. Uh, good news here, uh, we don't, most people don't have school Monday. Uh, so there's not going to be a ton of people on the roads. Uh, and I, again, I don't expect big impacts, but we do have the MLK March on Monday. And I want people to know that that's a, a small possibility. And then also it's going to be very, very cold with wind chills uh, potentially in the teens here in San Antonio. This is what we think it will feel like around 8 a.m. on Monday, 13 here in San Antonio, 19 in Divine, 14 in Bernie. 
those gusty winds combined with the really cold air, it's going to make it feel awful, awful cold. So what about that precipitation chance? This is 8 p.m. Sunday. Shows a little piece of energy coming through. This is very, very light stuff, but the models continue to indicate maybe a little bit of it sinking south. I do think it would be cold enough to get a little bit of a freezing rain here in San Antonio if indeed the precipitation does move in. The window for it is pretty small, so by 7 a.m. Monday, this is already trying to move out of here, and then we're just left with clouds the rest of your Monday. Uh, extended forecast. We're going to go 58 again tomorrow, 62 Saturday, 34 on Sunday, 32 Monday, but it's these overnight lows that really stick out. 25 Monday morning, 19 Tuesday morning. That's why we're talking about pipes, uh, because those kind of temperatures that's cold enough to where it can do some damage depending on your situation. 38 Tuesday, we do rise back up above freezing, but there is a, a period here where I'd say, even, especially in the hill country, where we could spend more than 48 hours below freezing. 48 on Wednesday, that's when we start to warm up, but another hard freeze Wednesday morning. Uh, we'll be here with you throughout all of this. We'll keep you updated on the KSAT weather app as well. We'll be right back. Oh, things are heating up in the new year on SA Live. Not only are they trying a hot new hobby, but it is National Soup Month. Ooh, that's your kind of month that's right there. That's my thing. Right Let's go alley. to Mike and Fiona at Market Square. <laughs> I, of course, it's the new year, and you might be wanting to eat a little healthier, right? Yeah, maybe lose a little bit of weight. Mm -hmm. Clifford Edwards is here, and you lost how much weight? Uh, about 25 pounds in, in a month. In just a month? Just a month, yeah. Okay. How did you do it? I did it eating soup. Okay, he's got some great <laughs> recipes coming up. We're going to tell you all about that. All right, Jen is out. Very interesting hobby out there. What you doing, Jen? That's right, it's getting hot in here. We're at Caliente Hot Glass, where you can come for maybe a Valentine's date night experience, and we are starting the process now. And this is what we will be making, these gorgeous hearts right there, as you can see. 